Geographer Simon Dalby is one of our two groups, our group's two theorists. His scholarship on the human security implications of climate change is internationally admired, so much so that an attendee at one of his seminars characterized him as a rock star in the field. The super wicked problems of the 21st century are tightly bound up with Earth system changes largely explained by our own activities. Human security hinges on how willing we are to acknowledge and prepare for this new and unsettled geological era. This is the work that Simon leads us in. Please welcome Dr. Dalby who will reflect on the December Conference of the Parties in Paris and the prospects for truly sustainable development. Thanks for that introduction, and it's always nice when people applaud before you actually say anything, because you know you get a bit of a, a re positive response without having to actually do anything. Anyway, um, let me talk briefly to this topic, um, but first of all, um, you're probably wondering what the connection between climate change, the Paris Conference, and sustainability actually is. Here's that slide again, uh, the one that, uh, in neat little graphics, summarizes the sustainable development goals. And if you look down at the, uh, the bottom, um, uh, you will see a green one over in the corner, which is called Protect the Planet. Um, protect the Planet, when you actually look at uh, the Sustainable Development Goals and the official version of them, um, it's actually all about climate change. It's just been summarized here. So Lucky 13 is the one I get to talk to you about um, this evening. Uh, because it's... Um, uh, crucial to many of the other sustainable development goals because if rapid climate change is likely to disrupt all sorts of things, including most of the other um, sustainable development goal themes, therefore climate matters big time because so many of the others are dependent on it. Particularly in terms of health, um, there's all sorts of possible connections between a rapidly changing climate and human health. And if this is a ridiculously complicated diagram, well, that's actually rather the point, uh, because climate relates to health in all sorts of different ways. Um, clearly, there are heat-related illnesses, uh, and indeed, people um, died en masse a dozen years ago um, in Paris in particular, um, when a major heat wave hit that summer. Um, 10, 12, 15,000 people um, in Paris, all sorts of other people in, in Europe. Uh, it was a major event. It caused all sorts of premature um, death and got people's attention, principally because the Parisians um, were not um, prepared to deal with this kind of situation. Um, that's the immediate um, consequences of heat events um, we saw last week, um, a particularly uh, vicious hurricane. Um, fortunately, um, Mexico got incredibly lucky and Patricia turned out uh, to hit the coast and between towns and the full influence of the storm was felt on the mountains um, where fewer people um, actually lived. But given the number of major storm systems we've seen this year, um, clearly climate is likely to cause disasters of this sort, prompt fatalities, um, longer term health consequences as a result of disruption, both of too much rain, big winds and heat. All of these things are, are interconnected promptly and immediately with health. But if you actually look at some of the long-term, slow-acting health consequences, various diseases with all sorts of long, complicated names that you know far better than I do um, uh, in there, um, but also respiratory allergies, asthma, all sorts of things that may result as climate systems um, uh, change the context within which routine human activities take place. Likely, we will see the shifting patterns of vectors for infectious diseases too um, as uh, the climate moves. And again, we have to anticipate these kinds of things. All of which means that if we can find ways to slow down climate change, it'll be easier to adapt and change and deal with the health consequences. And indeed, slowing down climate change, um, of course, is one of the crucial things um, that is on everybody's minds in the big conference coming 
starting at the end of next month, running through the first um, uh, couple of weeks of December, the so-called Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. COP21 is coming um, to Paris very soon. Why the connection between the COP um, and the Sustainable Development Goals? Well, if you actually look at the official United Nations document on the Sustainable Development Goals, um, not just the graphic that you've already seen a couple of times now, um, but it explicitly has a little asterisk on it saying that, of course, climate change will be dealt with by the United Nations Framework Convention um, on climate change. So if you're interested in sustainable development and climate, see Paris is basically um, what the connection explicitly is. There's a huge amount of hope um, that we will get um, what is in Canadian terms now called real change and now um, uh, at the Paris conference. And indeed, it will be a change to have a prime minister um, from Canada at one of these conferences is actually trying to play some kind of a constructive and helpful role, unlike the last nine, um, where Canada has basically been part of the problem in terms of dealing with climate change, rather than an active um, participant in searches for solution. But one needs to be careful about climate change. It's been going on for a long time. The signals have been very clear to the scientists for a couple of decades. Uh, the politicians have been slow to pay attention. And it's clearly going to take us actually well past 2030, which is the um, timeline for the sustainable, go sustainable development goals, before we really get a handle on it. But it is crucial to point out that if we are going to get a serious handle on climate change, we need to work intensively on it during the period of the Sustainable Development Goals. Because it's not going to be just real change now, it's going to be a much longer term uh, process uh, whereby we go through a series of stages of dealing with um, getting some constraint on emissions of carbon dioxide in particular, but the other greenhouse gases too. And then, as we move through the period of the Sustainable Development Goals out to 2030 there, um, moving through a series of subsequent um, discussions. In each case, the symbol um, in the graph there of the little ratchet is we have to ratchet up our efforts to deal with climate change emissions and then ratchet down um, the amount of greenhouse gases we are, actually, um, uh, we are actually emitting. This is the Greenpeace graphic that tries to summarize um, this long-term process, but at least the first 15 years of this um, are clearly uh, part and parcel of the Sustainable Development Goals. And it is the hope that starting with the Paris Conference, we will set in, pro in motion a process that will get us over the hump so that by 2030, uh, the world is actually starting to emit less greenhouse gases. Um, and then subsequently, after the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, we will continue to ratchet it right down so that uh, by the middle um, of this century, uh, we will be getting somewhere close um, to a carbon uh, neutral um, civilization. It's a big ask, and it is obviously much more than can be delivered at one conference in Paris starting next month. But one of the crucial messages about climate and its relationship to all the other aspects of our society is you don't wait around for things like Paris. Um, we move ahead in numerous different parts of society. Uh, and here in Canada, um, a number of uh, colleagues have actually mapped out how we get to sustainability. Um, it's a little bit of local content here because Alternatives Journal magazine back in March this year actually put a special um, issue together on a call to action on climate change. Um, and there's a whole series of practical things that can be done in different parts of society. And that's the crucial message, I think, about at least the climate change uh, sustainable development goal, is it isn't something that can only be solved in Paris. It requires thinking about how you um, build sensible buildings, how you reduce the amount of traffic and, and, and what my uh, grandfather used to call infernal combustion engines, um, uh, and how we seriously think about uh, building a society uh, which, in which we can live well uh, quite literally, um, without burning stuff to do so. Thank you.